Hello and welcome to the next part of Stroke Shave System, which is the second shot and approach shot in golf. We've talked about the short game, we've talked about the tee ball, we've talked about many aspects of what you need in order to understand your game to play better golf thanks to the Stroke Shave System. The tee ball, you know, some of us have two, some of us have three. That's what the tee ball is, the tee ball. The short game is the brain. So we're going tee game, short game. And in between the two, we have the heart. Okay? We need to protect this at all costs. We need to keep this sharp. We need to do our Sudokus. We need to do our crosswords. It's a metaphor. We need to protect this at all costs. You know what I'm talking about. This is where we keep it sharp. We keep the scores down. And in between, we have this that pumps the blood between the two parts of the game. But before we continue with the approach game and second shot, I would like to draw your attention to this over here. This is the number one tip I can give you for this entire video. If you just take this one tip, you will improve your score. If you're anything above a single figure handicap, probably above a six handicap, play a cheaper golf ball. Either cheaper or second hand, this way, if you get opening a new pack of balls or you spent a lot of money on your golf balls, you're not fearing losing them. The fear of loss of the golf ball will result in more lost golf balls. When you stop thinking about the three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, whatever you spend on a golf ball going missing because it's now in the bush, you play better golf. Have you ever noticed when you hit your water ball that you use on par threes with long carries, how much better you play? Because you're stress-free, puts you in a better mode, gives you a better swing. Play cheaper golf balls. Use it, don't use it, up to you. Now the reason I put this under approach and second shot in the same scope is because not always is it possible to hit your approach on a par four in two or on a par five, it's gonna also entail a second shot. Sometime on a par four, you're in a difficult situation, you can't reach the green. We don't call it an approach, we just call it the second shot to set up the final approach shot. These are very key concepts. So this is basically the game between the tee ball and the green. So it entails everything. And part of this, because I term it second shot and approach, another thing, a prerequisite you need, everybody needs this in their golf game, is the punch shot. It's nothing special, it's the same shot that you hit around the greens with your pitching wedge or your sand wedge or whatever you chip with, except you just make it longer and you use lower loft to keep the ball down. This is an important shot because this is what's gonna get you under 100 and under 90, so you can chip out back to the fairway, back further down the fairway to set up another shot. This shot is key. It's a very key shot to always have in the arsenal because eventually you get so good at the punch shot that you eventually start punching it onto the green. So initially it starts as a rescue recovery shot. After a lot of experience, it becomes a potent shot that you can start attacking greens with. This is a prerequisite because we're not always gonna be in a perfect position and you wanna always be confident that you can pitch it into perfect position for the next shot. So this is a prerequisite you really do need. Okay, play, uh, players, now as part, of the, as part of the way of the player, break 80, break 90, break 100, doesn't matter what you're trying to break, okay? I don't know if you can see my face yet, but I don't mind. Now, you've got to get the punch shot right. Now, with a punch shot, you want to know your trajectory. We've got 128 yards here, and we've got these trees in our way, got the leaves up here. You have to know your trajectory depending on your club. 128, I'm going to hit an A wedge, but if I hit an A wedge, it's going to hit this tree right here. So I've got the 8 iron. What you want to do with a punch is like a chip shot, like a long chip shot. You want to keep the badge of your glove going toward the target, okay? Badge of your glove going toward the target. And you're just going to, you're going to hit a chip shot with less loft. If you're trying to break 80, 90 or 100, when you're trying to break 100 or you're trying to break 90, this shot is key, often to get you back in play. And, very, and when you get much better at it, very good to get you on or around the green. So we've got 128. We're going to play this off the back foot to keep it down so it doesn't hit this tree. Back foot, badge of the glove going toward the hole, and you just have to hit like a three-quarter chip shot. Okay, and that's on the left side there. You see that? Now that's the kind of shot you need to get out of trouble out of trouble without hitting the tree and hit it, not hitting it straight down or going for a hero shot. You just want to punch it out, keep the loft low enough so it doesn't hit the stuff in front of you. That's the most important thing. A lot of people will just come out here with a normal club, they hit a wedge, bam, into the tree, dead. You have to really understand yourself, your game, how you react to specific situations. 
Now, this will be a long-term study of yourself. Approach game is the most difficult to get much better at because you can always find one or two clubs to use here from a perfect position. And here you don't need power. You don't need much except the ability to get the ball on the green somewhere and make one or two putts. It's pretty simple. Now I'm going to try to begin to explain how this works, how we can improve the approach game. It's so in-depth and as much as I try to simplify it, it's going to depend so much on your conditions that you play in. We took a look at the tee ball earlier, gave you some strategies to get the ball in play number one, not in hazards, allowing a second shot. And if you can, you start to plan your approach shot from the tee box so that you can allow the shot you prefer into the green. So we need to un first understand something very important about our game is the distance that we hit the golf ball. We have to understand and you need this. This is in prerequisite in the prerequisite video that you need to understand how far you hit the ball carry with your irons. Roll out with this one can depend potentially on the longer club. So you know if you're hitting a six or five iron how far it's going to roll out to reach your target. But generally we need to know carry distance so we can know how, how if we can carry the front edge, the middle of the green, etc. We want to know our carry distances for all our approach clubs. And then what you want to do when you know your distances is you want to know your favorite approach distances. So when you know your favorite approach distances, this is very important. When you know your favorite approach distance, this is where you get the three C's, commitment, confidence, and comfort, because you know your favorite distance, your favorite club, your favorite shot you hit that, and, your, and the shot shape that comes with it. There's many factors, but you know it, you know. Seven wood, baby draw, I know, perfect. 225, 230. And I double down on those shots. We try and hit more of these shots. So that's where planning back from the hole comes from. And that can mean when you're standing on the tee, you can go through that shot checklist that I've put up there on one of the videos. I'll link to it below. And we go through that shot selection and one of the questions you ask yourself is, can I get it to wedge range? Can I get it to a comfortable approach distance with a mid iron? And can I get it to my longest approach distance that is comfortable? You so let's go through an example on, on this hole, for example, a little dog leg right. We're on the tee. It's about 375 yards. Not too long, just a normal par four. And you can see the 200 yard marker. You can see the 150 yard marker. You can see the 100 yard marker. From the T, you understand with your range finder or, your, or your, your GPS watch how far it is from there to there. So let's say you're targeting about 150, 140 yards here. You're going to hit a shot that's going to go the distance to reach the red stake or whatever stake the 150 is to allow you that preferred shot in. That's how we work back from the green. We try to get the ball to a position that we can hit our favorite club. I get it to 150. I'm hitting a beautiful little nine iron into the green and I'm laughing. That means I only need a 225 yard, roughly, depending on what your range finder says, 225 yard shot. That means you can pick a better club from the T instead of auto pulling a club to be able to set up this game, the second shot and the approach shot. It starts on the T, but it's, it starts from working back from the green. So you need to understand how much you want in and then you hit the corresponding shot to get you to that position. Of course, if you can't do that, you just have to get the ball in play from the tee. That's basically how it's done to be able to calculate to where you need to go. But of course, it will work out sometimes and sometimes it will not work out. Sometimes you're going to end up in the trees. Sometimes you're going to end up in the deep stuff. Now the point about this, what I'm making here, is that this is where it comes into play that is not the approach. It can be if you have the skill level to say, okay, I'm going to hit it low under this tree with a little draw and get it on the green. But a majority of us do not have the skill. All we need to do, be doing is looking where is that fairway, greens up here, and then again working back from the green, say, okay, what do I want to have in this green? I'm like, I'm like 165 yards away. I've got trees in my way, no chance. I'm in the deep rough, can barely get the club on the ball. How am I going to get this in play and where do I want it into the green? This is the second shot. 
and that means you want to know okay what do i want to have in Jill green my favorites remember my favorites you want to double down on them this my favorite is a 95 yard 56 degree okay how do i get the ball from 165 to 95 i need a 70 yard shot what do i have in my arsenal and what you have in your arsenal is the punch shot remember the punch shot this is what gets you back in play this is the number one shot you're going to need to break 90 break 100 and eventually break 80 and then once you're breaking 80 you need the shot more sharpened to get your scores down instead of shooting those big numbers and that's when you start learning to hit the ball along the ground under the trees to the place you prefer and then hit your favorite approach shot in players could i have picked a better position to show you a punch shot this is the other shot you need in golf you need a punch shot if you want to climb the the ladder from beginner to break 100 to break 90 especially 90 you need the punch shot what is a punch shot a punch shot is a lower lofted chip shot nothing special nothing special but you have to learn your trajectory when you chip a seven iron when you chip a six iron with 30 40 percent of your distance swing you know effort how does it shoot does it go high does it go low does it roll a lot you need to know that before you can take on these shots the standard mid handicap are going to come here oh man i'm going to go under that tree bro i'm going to hit a little low runner it's going to bounce on the cart path it's going to hook around on the green it's not i promise you're going to pound it into this tree drop straight down and you're still punching a punch shot is something to get us back in play we can go at that i'll show you that shot but you have to understand your skill level when you understand your skill level you become better at golf if i'm a standard let's say 15 handicap player averaging 90 92 i'm thinking i'm going to go at that pin bam i'm going to put a seven up on this hole no we're going left players look just chip it left you've hit a drive into the trees you've got so much space left what are we talking about caddy oh let go so we're going to hit a little nine iron okay. now we have a gap up there where do we hit a ball through that gap imagine your trajectory bam through the gap it's left of the green how do you get it that high that quickly okay i need to hit a i need to hit a fifth an a wedge how far is the a wedge going to go it's not even going to reach i'm going to get in trouble no let's get ourselves to a position we like there's the 150 marker further up is the 100 marker so let's go between 150 and 100 yards we take the what do we have here nine iron just chip it back out it's a chip shot you're going to have to practice that especially when you hit toward water you don't want to boom it too far so you want to get used to it it's a green side chip with a longer carry a bigger effort watch there we go green side chip middle of the fairway look at that now you have a clear shot now i'll do the four iron for you that you're going to try to take on when you really shouldn't i'm not being mean but sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind so here's the shot you want to take on you know you're going to think about it and i'm going to be in the back of your mind saying no lexi nah? lexi going to be in the back of your mind saying don't do like that don't do that okay this is the shot now when i see the shot i can see that little draw balls above the feet okay not great for us not great for us so it's going to probably hook okay but it's going to pop up high because it's on a bit of an upslope we've got trees with fruits in front of us those fruits are hard if it hits that fruit you don't know where it's going to go it's a round fruit you've got a tree you've got a big tree you've got a bit of gap there if you can get this green side on the right wow well done but this is how it's going to go i might cock this up middle of the stance back of the stance glove going to the target see that's the danger so you hit that out and it goes down the path and the punch shot remember is a long green side chip with lower loft sometimes you need to go under trees you're going to use lower loft always use a loft that's not going to bang into the branch okay you need the punch shot every step of the way of your golfing career you're going to hit it in the trees and as you get better you're going to hit better punch shots that actually get to the green give yourself time give yourself time practice the basic punch shot back in the fairway eventually you're going to have the skill to go for the hero shots because they won't be hero shots they'll be shots you can do that's what i'm talking about use the punch shot to your advantage it will be the most valuable shot 
besides the bump and run in your golf game, bar none. Punch shot, basic chip and run, two most valuable shots in golf, I'll tell you that. Absolutely perfect. Good lie. You got 140. What do you normally hit 140? Okay, but let's say you hit a pitching from there. No, no, no. Even before the bump. The pitching on nine Come stand here. Think of the trajectory of your nine yeah, and your pitching. Maybe you touch the tree. I think it will guarantee you touch the tree. How about accept that this is a par par five? Yeah. And just hit another six iron like you did there. To put same, it on the green? Same shot. Two, two. You see the marker in the fairway? Yeah. Over that marker. Okay, let's try. Six. Leg pull. Good shot, baby. On the green. Come on. What a man. Now, is this glamorous? No, it's not glamorous, but it's not stupid, okay? Because a lot of the time, you're going to get into situations where you think you're going to hit what we call in golf a hero shot. But as we all know, the hero shot is a euphemism for a stupid shot, okay? A stupid shot. So a lot of the times, you'll see people getting into trouble behind trees. And I'll show you a little example here. I mean, you're welcome to skip over these examples, but they, I think they're really helpful. One day I was playing with B-Dog. Okay, that's a bit exaggerated. And he had a shot on a slope here. And he was on the, this side of the slope, so it was on a down slope. He had a tree in front of him that even with a full 60 degree from a flat lie would just barely get over. Okay, first thing he does is he pulls out his 60 degree, he's going to go over that tree. So he's on a down slope, so that means the ball trajectory will be lower, it will not get up higher. And even if you do get it up high enough to get over this tree, the trajectory you need to get over the tree means it will plop down right in the middle of the tree because of the trajectory, your loft, the distance you hit it and the lie of the ball, which we're going to get into next. This is just the background. What he did not see was the shot below. And that's the punch shot. Gets you back in play. If you make good contact on some of them, you've got a long fairway, you can stripe it right down there, 150, 160, depending on the loft you choose. But this is where you have to start to begin to know more about yourself. I need to take my chance. So you're going, you want to go sandwich over the tree? Yeah. I think it's not good, but I won't feel very good if I don't try it. You won't be very good if you don't try. I think, I, yeah. I won't sleep very well tonight if I don't try that shot. Think impossible? Let me just check the distance. The distance, eh? If not, I go like that. And... 92 yards from this lie. Okay, this lie is quite tight. You're on the top of a slope. You're not on the up slope. If you're back here, I would say go for it, right? Yeah. If you're back here, go for it. But you're on the top of the slope, so you don't have much launching. Yeah. So you're going to be under a lot of pressure to get it over the, the, tree. the tree quickly. So easy shot. Go like that. Easy okay. shot. Chip it out. Okay. With the... Uh, what kind of... What club do you think? Wait. Yeah, yeah. Just chip it out. Perfect. Oh, no. Drop, Doug. Uh, sandwich for 70. Sandy from 70. Let's go. Yeah. Because this has 50% tempo, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Left a bit. Okay, I like it. I like it, but Hikno. Let's do let's do thirty percent tempo. Thirty? Thirty percent tempo straight at the pin. Pitch pitching which thirty percent. Show me thirty percent. No no. Just make your tempo as slow as you can. As slow? As slow as you can. It's a little better, but only for this shot because of this tree up here. So your oh, sandwich... I, I know, I know, I know. Your uh, the sandwich hit the tree? It didn't hit the tree, but if you had sent it with the same trajectory to the pin, to the pin it, it would, have, tree, sure. would have hit okay. this tree. Now I got go it. Just, daring. We, we're I not going to go daring, because then you're going to take a nine. 
Yeah. So let's just let's chip it out with a okay. whatever you have to chip it out. Um, let's go for a. Because it's not only about the score, hey. We want to just practice playing it smart. Yeah. What have you got there? Fifty-six. Okay, cool. Just chip it back in the fairway. You'll have a hundred-yard shot in. You know what? I'm actually not. I'm gonna go eight. Well, how much do you want in? Huh? How much do you want in? No, I'm just putting it here. I just don't want to go in the tree. No, but why not just put it where the caddy's walking for a 100 yard shot? Okay. Just a very little chip. Yeah, there you go. And this is why I tell you about these things because Every single shot of your approach and your second shot is going to depend. This is just the single most important thing that, and this is where most people get completely tripped up in golf, completely. And I can help you to a degree, but only to a degree. Every single shot is going to be determined by the lie. The lie is going to determine every single shot. What is it going to determine? It's going to determine how far you think you can hit the ball. It's going to determine what loft you're going to hit. It's going to determine which kind of club you hit to get contact on the ball and not just grass or just sand or whatever. It's going to, co it's going to contribute to the trajectory of the ball. Sitting down, sitting on hard pan, is it sitting in soft grass, is it on the grass, is it in the grass, is it middle of the grass, is it fluffy, is it, is it compacted, what is the lie? And all of these things are going to be dependent on your ability to read them and then match up your shots to what you can do that will work 70% of the time. This is just how it works. And the lie I would say is going to contribute not on the tee and not on the green. The lie is going to contribute 90% to what kind of shot you can hit. And this is why it's such a difficult concept to explain because the lie depends on your conditions. The lie depends on your ability to adapt and read the lie. This is why people who try to break 100 or 90 are less successful at it and find themselves in positions that they don't understand why things happen. The reason is nobody has made them aware of the lie. And this is what I'm doing for you right now, player. You're getting the awareness to understand that the lie is the most important concept in the approach game, anywhere not on the green and on the tee. Because now you're aware that this is 90% important. It's going to determine the rest of your process to be able to hit a good shot. And it's, it's so big that I wish more people would focus on this because this is the, the difference between a, a 75 and an 84. It, it's just that. It, it's, it's a difference between an 86 and a 97. It, it's just this. The lie is the first thing you notice when you get up to the ball. It's nothing else. There can be wind downwind, you can be having the, the best day of your life. You, you, you oh, can fantastic. See you get back. to the ball and it's sitting in a depression. If you haven't noticed it, you're going to either top it or you're going to chunk it because your body knows it's there, but you haven't recognized it. Now, we're going to go through a few things about the lie. It's not easy to explain, but I'm going to try my best. Some basics. And remember, this is your starting point, okay? I'm going to give you the starting point. You're going to take it and put it in your own notebook, your own consciousness, and you're going to start being mindful of the lie and the corresponding shots you hit and how they are affected by the lie and how you can do it better. So here's some very basics. Okay, here's your feet, balls below your feet. That ball going right, fader. Ball is above your feet, that ball's hooking. Okay, it's going to start on the line you, you expect and hook. Next one, we have ball on a down slope. Okay, this is where you're standing over here. The ball's on a down slope. So you're facing that way. Your shoulders are angled down. That ball is coming low and squirting right. Your ball is on an up slope. Okay, so you're heading up the slope. That ball is going left. Now, if you combine these, if you combine ball on an up slope above your feet, that's huge hook, okay? Ball below your feet on a down slope that's really low and squirting right. Now you combine counter in counter acting ones like ball below your feet. Ball below your feet on an up slope 
you, can, you may cancel it. But those are the basics. Ball below feet, right. Ball above feet, left. On a downslope, right. On an upslope, left. But that's a starting point. The reason I say starting point is because, for example, when I hit this shot, it very rarely fades. Why is that? Why is that, Matty? Because I come a little over the top on those shots and it corrects the course and it goes pretty straight. Now you put me on a slope like this and that ball's going left and lefter because of the exact same thing. So I have to adapt me, ball above my feet, aim way right and expect huge pull slot, pull hook, pull hook, pull hook. Pull hook. I mean, does, yes. it get, does it get better than that? Yes. What a shot, and dude. It's long. That is amazing. I think it's... Wow. This one, I know I'm going to counteract. Keep a running record of these things in your mind because this is going to save you a shot, two shots, three shots, depending on how you play. So understand the basics. So the basics I put out for you. Now you get to understand you. Just keep it in mind. Hit the shot. Hmm. That didn't work out. Let me do it again. This is important. On the golf course, you can only practice your approach game on the golf course. You can go to a driving range and hit flat, flat lies all day. Get to the golf course, screwed. And they're never perfect. Sometimes sitting down, sometimes sitting up. So learn these things by hitting them on the golf course. Two shots, three shots from the same position. And then start taking notes. Go play a practice round. No one behind you, whatever. Okay, it doesn't hook that much if my ball's above my feet. Okay, second one, yeah, didn't hook. Next one, didn't hook. Okay, mental note or in your notebook. Okay, ball below my feet, supposed to slice. Matt says, oh man, that, that really sliced. I shanked that, okay. Again, ooh, nearly shanked it again. Start to understand how to adapt it to yourself and then you will understand how that affects your ball. Now that's slope. Now we're talking about the other part of lie. Lie depends on, now lie depends not only on the slopes, it depends on the type of grass you're playing, depends on the soil and the sand type underneath and the quality of the grass, the quality of the maintenance, the quality of the soil, the quality of everything, and on top of that, moisture. So when you're coming up to a golf ball, you have to check it out. Okay, we can say, the lie, we can also talk about rough, semi, sand, hard pan, gr fairway grass, first cut, etc. I can't exactly teach you that because I play on Bermuda now. It took me four years, three years to learn how to play on Bermuda and I'm still not 100% on it. I grew up playing Kikuyu and bent grass greens. Kikuyu fairways and rough bent grass greens. Kikuyu rough and Kikuyu fairways are completely different to bent and completely different to Bermuda. Bent grass greens are completely different to Bermuda, which are completely different to Paspalum grass. So you have to understand the grass type you, you use and understand the name of it. Learn the name of the grass type you're playing. Ask your pro, ask your maintenance, ask your manager guy what grass is on your fairways, what grass is in your rough, and what grass is on your green. So you can understand when you make your notebook about how things react to the lies on the grass you play, you can take that with you everywhere you go, learning as you go. You go to Florida, you're playing Bermuda. You go to Arizona in the winter, you're playing ryegrass and bent. You go to the north, northeast, you're playing probably a bent hybrid and bent on the greens, so a bit more grain on that. You go to like the Middle East, or for example, you're probably playing Pasvalum, a very salt water, uh, you know, adaptable grass, and they all react differently. When you know what grass you're playing, you can then go through things like the rough, Okay, now you want to understand the rough on top of the rough, in the rough, and you want to understand how it reacts. See, there's so many dimensions here that I need you to get that little book and I need you to write in it. Okay, so for me, I'm going to give you an example. Okay, on top of the rough on Bermuda, it looks easy. Everybody sees the video mm, sitting really nicely, man. It should be like real easy. Now that you know the ball is above your feet, so you're going to have to either lift your chin a little bit and then swing sweeping it so that you don't hit the grass first and then that grabs the blade of the club, slows it down, hits the top of the face and you get no distance. No, you have to understand it's raised above your feet a little bit, right? Because it's on top of the grass while your feet have sunk into the grass. 
So you grip that, you grip down, or you lift your chin, and you understand you're going to be sweeping it, and it's above your feet, so it's going to probably go a little bit left. So what you do is, you take a little bit less loft. For me, that may be from a, from an eight down to a seven, so I'm going to get less right to left, and I'm gripping down a little, and I'm swinging a bit easier, getting the same distance, and this is where you have to understand. When you hit that ball, is it spinning or does it bound on? These are things you start to learn. So many facets, do you understand? On the rough, you're on top of the rough. You try some shots, okay? I sweep it, it hooks a little bit, less spin on it, so I know next time I have that shot, let's try it again. Okay, still not spinning. Okay, so that means I've got to hit like lower loft and let it punch up there so it lands and then rolls another 12, 15 yards. That I can take into consideration for the next shots. But if I just keep hitting copy paste, eight iron, fluffing it before the ball because it's sitting on top of the grass, what do I learn? What do I learn? I learn nothing. I just learn the fact that I think I suck. In the rough, down in the rough on an approach shot. Because it's down in the rough, because Bermuda is very thick bladed grass, it just sits in a nest. Now, how am I going to get a club face onto the ball? Well, the only way is to get steeper or use something that will glide through the rough. And sometimes you can use a hybrid or a wood in Bermuda to glide through it and make contact and bunt it down the fairway. Or you use higher loft that will come in a bit steeper and make contact with that ball and pop it out. But you have to understand, okay, maybe I can't hit a six, seven or eight iron and get contact with the ball. It's just gonna get that grass between the face and the, and the ball and just <laughs> That's how we learn. You have to understand. That's only two kind of lies. On top of the rough, in the rough. That's literally a whole discussion on two lies. I can't teach you that. Your rough at your course is going to react differently. So you need to understand that. The grass type could mean you're playing bent grass fairways. That means you're going to get very tight lies. Very tight lies will produce a certain kind of shot. But you can play Bermuda grass and it's a bit fluffier you may experience a different experience. You play Kikuyu, it's much firmer. It's really thick blade, sticky grass. You need to understand your grass and then understand when you go play somewhere else or watch someone play somewhere else, they have a different grass and your game ain't gonna work there. You're gonna have to learn it, create more notes in your book to understand your whole game. This is how you become a complete golfer. So basic overview for the, for the lie. You're gonna have your rough, you're going to have your fairway, you're going to have sand, you're going to have loose lie, you're going to have a tight lie, you're going to have hard pan, you're going to have broken up soil. And you need to understand yourself how you hit that shot. How's the trajectory? How's the distance? How's the fat shot versus thin shot? But start to look at the lies and start to understand what happens when you hit certain shots with certain clubs. If you're not successful with the lie that you're seeing, and, and you've tried a shot, you need to hit it again. And you need to do it again until you understand what's happening. Because now that you're aware of this, it, it's just opening up a whole new world for you. So you're gonna hit shots and you're gonna pay, pay attention to the lie. It's gonna determine what you can do. But you're only gonna be able to understand what you can do by trying shots. So when you understand the grass type that you're playing on, you can make notes and, and keep it applicable to that and then adapt your game depending on where you go play. The sand and soil type is also very important. Is it wet? Is it moist? Is it damp? Is it dry? Is it hard pan? These things are all going to make a big difference and you need to understand it yourself. I can't really teach you this stuff because it's so situationally dependent. Someone in West Africa, someone in East Africa, someone in North, Northern States of the US, in the Southern States of the US, Thailand versus South America. It's all different. So you have to figure it out by looking in the rough, looking in the fairway, looking in the deep rough, looking in the sandy areas. When the ball is sitting in a depression, when the ball is sitting up, how does the ball react? Okay, That's how you become a great approach player. I know it's obscure now, but the fact that I've told you that's 90% of the shot. The reason I tell you it's 90% of the shot and you start to understand how the ball reacts the whole point of knowing that and, and experimenting, okay, you have to experiment. I cannot show you this. You have to experiment. Once you experiment enough, you will fully understand why I say this is 90%. And when you understand it's 90% of the shot, you'll understand why.
because once you understand your trajectory of whatever club you're hitting, whatever club you're hitting, you understand the trajectory of the shot. You have to take note. You have to understand your punch shot. You have to understand your full shot. You have to understand the shot that you want to get under the trees, from the hard pan, from the soft lie, from the rough, everything. You want to know your trajectory. You want to know the distance the ball is going to go, depending on the lie, and depending on the slope. So, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. It's so much stuff. I know it's, it's an avalanche, but you can do it by paying attention, by being conscious. So the lie of the ball, depending on the grass, depending on the slope, is going to give you a different distance depending on how you're hitting the golf ball on that situation. So this is where the note taking comes in, because I know if I'm hitting a ball and you can feel the difference in elevation with the ball above my feet, I know I'm gripping down, I know I'm swinging a little softer, I know it's going to hook. So we can make little calculations to understand how far is the ball actually going in each situation. That's why you need the notebook. When you have the notebook, you can keep notes of these things, try them out on the course, keep going, doing it again, doing it again, until you find the solution for you and turn it into your FAVZ and you doubled down on the things you can do. Now, we want to always remember the 70%, okay? So whenever you're looking at the lie of the golf ball, you want to take into account your distance and your trajectory in that situation 70% of the time. There's no quick fix. There's no quick fix. This is the approach game, the second shot. We plan as best we can. We, we, we've, we do our best planning, but the planning is going to depend on your ability to understand your game. And the reason I tell you about the lie is now you're conscious of it. Now you're going to take a look. You may not be great at it for a while because it's so new, but slowly the things are going to fall into place. When the things feel like they're falling apart, maybe they're just falling into place. So pay attention, start to notice the reaction to your club and the shot you chose according to the lie. And then when you're playing rounds, hit again, hit again, work it out. Don't just hit a ball and think you suck. Because often one of the biggest problems with golf, especially 90 and 100 breakers and even mid 80 players is they don't understand how difficult the shot is that they're hitting. They're expecting too much from the shot not understanding that their lie may be difficult for the shot they're trying to hit and they don't know it. Okay. So pay attention to this. When you get this right and you can match it up with your shots that you've chosen, you're going to be a much better approach player. That's a basic overview of the approach play. Now we're going to take a quick look at the planning and and how to actually get better at the approach game when you do eventually elect to double down on what you do and pick your favorite shots. Because it's, there's still a bit to go, go through here because you're not going to hit every green. You're not going to be perfect on your approach shots. You're not going to be a perfect golfer. That's the point of golf. It's not perfect. But going through this, matching up you with the situation is going to make you a better player. But because we're not going to be perfect all the time, because it's so changing, because we have different lies all the time, because of that, you're not going to hit the same shot over and over, copy-paste. Avoid copy-paste golf. We're playing proactive golf, not reactive golf. Middle of the fairway here, you've got about 160. Okay, what do we see here? I mean, there's no real danger. A short-siding bunker here. Flat lie. What are you going to do? You're just going to hit your normal shot. Easy game. No problem. Easy game. But let's say the ball's below your feet. Okay, that's what did I tell you? It's going to go right. So now you start to understand more. Okay, I'm 160. I want to hit my 7 iron, which you normally hit from 160 or your 6 iron. But it's below my feet. And Matt told me it's going to go right. And my experiments have shown me it does go right. And I hit a fader. So it's going to go right plus the fader. Now we've got short siding over here. We've got nothing on this side. This is clear. So what you're going to have to do is then adapt your game. You're going to have to pick new targets to aim at. Let's say a bush behind the, the green because you know it's going to come off that lie and it's going to fader so that if it comes out straight, you're safe. And if it does the thing you think it's going to do, you're going to be perfect. This is where the planning comes in. You don't want to be in the short side. 
What is a short side? A short side is where you have the least amount of green between the pin and the edge of the green on your side of where you are. So if you're here, so if you're here in this bunker or over here on the other side of the bunker, this is probably three or four yards. Now you've got a chip on there and you're going to try and make it stop and you're going to tempt yourself into hitting some pro shot and probably dump it in the bunker. But if you miss it here by aiming for that shot shape, look at all the green you have to work with. You want to be on the long side, never the short side. You want to in you want to know your golf course. So you need to know your course. I mean, your course is your course. You need you need to know where you can miss. You don't want to miss at the bottom of some huge slope when there's like a, a beautiful area here to chip from. You don't want to miss long if there's water back here. See, these are the things you want to know. So like one little thing I can give you for this kind of thing is like trouble long, stay middle or short. Trouble short, go middle or long. This is the kind of thing you can work on by starting to understand your golf course. Now, how do you understand your golf course? You have to play it a lot. Okay, you have to play the course a few times. You have to start to be conscious. And when you're conscious, what that what I mean is you're standing on the green over here and you're looking back to the hole and you're seeing this fairway go like this and you're seeing big bushy trees here and you're seeing whatever there. Now you're starting to see, hey, hang on, where's the best angle to hit to this green from? Oh, it's at the wide end of this dog leg, not the short side. I keep trying to carry this tree and I end up here and I have to hit some dangled shot to get there. But if I look back, I see the most direct line is from there. Now you know how to plan your tee shot to get you to that position. You know, I'm throwing so many things at you, I understand that, but it's, it's too exciting. You know, the approach game is a very exciting part of the game, but it's only exciting because it's hard work. You know, these easy things like tee game and, and chipping and putting, it, it's hard work, but once you get it, you got it. You know, the, the approach game is ever evolving. And, and that's one way you can start to plan the approach game is that you start to look back from the, the green. You, when you're on the green, okay, you, you start to look at the green complex. Okay, you're on the green. Okay, man, you know what? If I go long here, okay, we're hitting from this direction. If I go long here, there's this like bunker that's like, well below the green and another one here so on this hole i never want to be long because i notice on the sh in the front of the green there's this area here that always allows a very easy chip here's a down slope here's an up slope okay here's maybe a potential place to miss but generally if i'm going to err on the side of caution it's going to be short allowing me the best chip never want to be here never want to be here never want to be below the green from the rough heading onto the green this is just this is just an overview of how you can start to learn the approach game in terms of planning in terms of practicing hitting multiple balls taking notes on how you hit the shots that you're trying taking notes on your golf course making your own yardage book there's a video i've made on how to do your own yardage book on google earth use it it's free you can measure the width of the fairway you can measure how far it is to carry things. You can measure the, the length of bunkers. You can measure the length of a green. You can see where not to miss on your course. You need to understand your game and you need to adapt to it by using the things you can, depending on the lie, getting the ball to the area you can hit the ball from, using your favorite shots, and then avoiding the shit you don't like. Avoiding it. There's too many people who come onto the golf course and say, Nah, I've got to work through it. I've got to get over this with my driver. I got to go do this with my long iron approaches. You, you do have to, but it's in a practice round. When you're trying to score, you have to avoid the things you're scared of. Remember, it's for a practice round only. You go and work on the things you don't know and start to make notes. But you have to be very conscious, very mindful. This is the most mindful, conscious part of the game. And the things you want to do is you want to avoid, you want to avoid the things you don't like and double down on the things you do like. The other thing you want to remember is a total detachment from the result. Your best laid plan, your best laid plan is that you've got the perfect number, 165. It's your perfect seven iron. You've got a great lie. It's fantastic. You've hit the ball and you've missed the green over here. Now you have to chip. You have to let go of the attachment to the shot. It's total detachment. If you're going through the process, we've got the century. We've got par as a social construct. We've got, 
we've got line zero, we've got triple six system. If there's a process you're going through, if there's something you're doing and there's rules that you're setting up for yourself and, and you, you, you're going through the checklist of the, the shot selection, you've got 100% commitment. You have done everything correct, but you have to let go of the attachment of the shot because the attachment to this approach shot is silly because it's the hardest place to improve. The main thing we want to do with approach shots is set up another shot to make it easy to get up and down or two putt or make the birdie. That's all the approach game is for amateurs. It's not like this, you know, pin shooting, shooting darts at the pins like a pro. That stuff doesn't exist for, for amateurs because the reason I tell you to plan in a way that I, that I tell you to plan is because the pros don't care. The reason I tell you to aim conservatively, the reason I tell you to be detached from the results is because we are not professionals, okay? You're watching a highlights reel and the difference between a pro and an amateur is that the pro is playing a completely different game to us. We do not play the same game. It's a completely different game. We should redefine, change the names of the games because it's so vastly different and there's no more evidence on that than the approach shot. The 165 yard shot, 185 yard shot for a pro, whatever the equivalent is, they're firing little draw skis into this pin tight on the left side, despite this being crappy lie, because you know why? They back themselves to get up and down from anywhere. That's why they take on these shots. We, we are not playing those shots like we can back us. Yes, back yourself, back yourself, but back yourself to do the things we can do, not the things we don't practice and we don't know how to do. That's why the pros shoot at pins. What we're doing is we're picking conservative targets and hitting a cocky shot because that way we know we've got the remaining shot. Better golfers play more easy shots. Golfers with higher handicappers are playing more difficult shots more often, often unforced often unforced shots. So from 165, going dead at the pin, they know they hit a draw and they've short siding themselves, chip into the rough again, chip onto the green, two putt, they've taken a six and they think they suck. All could have been avoided by planning the approach to a place where you can do what you can do by taking into account your shot shape, your ability, your trajectory, your distance and the lie of the golf ball. It's very tough, I know I'm, I'm, I've, I've kind of like giving you a lot to think about, but just take away this one thing. The approach game, the second shot game is 90% dependent on the lie. The lie is going to help you to go through your checklist to pick the shot. You can do 70% of the time using the arsenal of shots you have that you understand through knowledge of yourself, the distance you hit the ball, the trajectory you hit the ball, your ability to hit off of that lie. If you can understand that, taking into account the grass type, the slope type, and how the ball reacts according to you, you're gonna become a superb approach game player because you're gonna be able to plan better, you're gonna be able to miss better, you're gonna be able to adapt in the environment that you're in, and you're gonna be so full of knowledge that you're gonna be able to pick something that is much better than what you're doing now, which I guarantee is copy-paste golf. 160, I'm hitting this. 160, I'm hitting this. Completely different lies, different results. Get the notebook write in your notebook, keep notes of how you play, different lies, different clubs, I promise, you're gonna be the player you were meant to be, and give you six months, I'll give you six months, and you're gonna be slashing shots, using your approach game, just because you are. Freaking mindful. The reason you're going to be so much better at this game is because you're going to be a mindful player. A lot of people will think mindfulness, oh, you must be talking about like meditation, like Eastern mysticism, like consciousness, expanding your consciousness and, you know, you blab. No, it's just literally thinking. Mindful. When you're on autopilot mode, you can exert no free will on the golf ball. You can exert no solution onto the shot. You're in autopilot, you're auto pulling a club, you're not looking at the lie, you're not thinking, you're not understanding the reaction according to your game, you don't know your trajectory, you're hitting the trees, you, you're hitting it 
left, right, center, in the water too far, because you didn't understand yourself. When you are aware and mindful of how you play golf, okay, the point of awareness and mindfulness is that you understand it, you know it. Therefore, you allow more options. When you are mindful, you create alternative options. When you're on autopilot, you have one thing you're doing because you're not thinking and you're just doing it. When you become mindful, you understand the alternatives. When you have alternatives, that's when you start experimenting. That's when you start going, damn, I'm pretty good at this shit. And when you get good at this shit, you make the notes, you get better at the damn game, you stop complaining about, I don't know why that happened. Oh my God, that always happens to me. No, you start understanding, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Every time the ball is sitting up on the rough, that seems to happen to me. Every time I'm just like on a sandy lie, I kind of, I, I fluff it. Okay, okay, let me try something else. Let me try bunting a seven wood down there instead of hitting a six iron. Maybe let's just try that out. I'll make a video on the lies of the ball, the slope of the ball. I'll try my best for Bermuda. Maybe you can adapt it to where you are, but please, but please understand, this is the most difficult part to improve. Why? Because it, it requires extreme mindfulness. It ex takes extreme thinking and, and experimentation, and it's a longer process. But the payoff from this is that much bigger because it's that difficult. Okay? The T game, we can pick two or three clubs and we can get in play. The short game, we can pick two or three clubs and we can do okay. But here we're always in a different situation with a different lie, with a different club, with a different trajectory, with a different requirement. And it can be infinite. It's an infinite possibility. But you can whittle it down to what you can do in a certain number of situations. Let's say 10, 15, 20 situations. That alone is going to slash so many strokes from your score. That's why it's called stroke shaved. It should be stroke slashed. This is strokes slashed. Okay? Now, thank you for listening. And if it was, if it's too much to take in, I can clarify anything. Ask me questions down below. I will try to clarify it on the Golf Sidekick Clips channel or potentially this channel. But that's the overview. Main thing is, I hope I've made you aware of stuff. Mindful can expand your consciousness beyond just being a five percent conscious person, ninety-five percent autopilot on the golf course. I want you seventy-five percent autopilot, the twenty-five percent mindful over your approach shots that's all forget the t forget the chipping for a round or two just be mindful of your lie be mindful of the trajectory you need to hit be mindful of the club how it came out how did i do there how was i feeling what was my commitment why is that okay adapt keep notes bam player you were meant to me okay let's talk about lies a lot of people want to know about the lie of the ball. Look at this ball over here. This ball is sitting real pretty. We're going to say that's sitting about 85%. This ball is in the same part of the course, but it's just sat down in the grass. We're looking at about, a, that's a 30% lie. On a video game, you're going to say about 30%. So you're going to have to adjust your shot from far out, and now your strategy changes. First thing you look at is the lie of the ball. Now, what am I going to do here? This one, I can hit anything I like. This one I'm going to have to hit down on to get out of there. A wood's not going to get in there. A long iron's never going to get through there. So on the first one, I can take my high. On this one, I can do anything. So I'm going to hit my five wood. Now this is a persimmon five wood, I understand. But it doesn't matter. It proves the point. I can hit this shot from here. But I can hit any shot from here, okay? I can hit anything. But the next one, we have to really consider. You have to understand, if I hit the five wood here, let me do a five wood. It's going to be a disaster, I think. Let's say it just goes and settles in there into the rough. Check this out. You're going to have to hit down on it. We're going to get a lot of grass between the ball and the club face. Okay, it's going to be a tough one. See, so it comes out like a, like a knuckle ball. It, there's no control of where it's going to go. I got a bit of contact on it, but it, it comes out like a knuckleball, like that, right? And there's no idea which way it's going. The first one I have clear idea. So what I have to do generally is take higher loft. It's going to adjust the tactic for the hole. Maybe I could go with it with a longer club, but 
I can't now because of this lie. And we just have to accept that. Don't force it because you're going to create more problems. Get the lowest loft possible to get the ball out advanced toward the hole. This one is, I think, best a 7 iron. Even this might be too little loft. You're going to have to hit a little down on it, but get through it. So we've got a lot of grass between the ball and the club there. Normally the 7 is going to go like 175, 180. That one, I doubt, is going to go more than 150, maybe 140. We just have to adapt. Check the lie. How's the ball sitting? If it's sitting clean, take advantage. If it's not, you have to adapt your plans. Hit something as low aloft as you can, but still getting the ball out without a possibility of a shank, possibility of a top. Just make sure you can get it out, advancing it toward the hole. Let's take a look at the lie again. So we have a bit of a patchy area here. You can see there's like in between grass, there's a bit of bare ground. So here we've gone in between some grass. It's a bit bare. It's not a bad lie, but we have to understand it's not exactly sitting up on a perfect tuft of grass. We're in the fairway, but sometimes this happens. There's a little, a little bit of bare patch or something, or the, the grass is recovering from a shortcut. If I hit a nine here, I'm probably going to hit like fat on this one because I feel like I have to hit more down on it because it's on like almost like a, almost like a hard pan except it's wet. So I would recommend taking one more club, gripping down on it, and then swinging that that club, just like a normal shot. I don't think you want to go too steep on this because you can end up having a bit of a, a fat shot. So we're going to take an eight iron from 143 instead of the nine and just grip down and swing it smooth. So that's going to hit the left side of the green, but it's better than the steep shot. What will often happen is you want to go steep in because you can see the ball is in between some grass. You have to be aware of your lie. When you have a perfect lie, you can do whatever you like. Into the grain, you're going to understand that the club's going to get caught. Do you see that? Then down the grain, which is this way, it's going to glide through. That's going to give you a couple more yards. It's going to be easier. You're not going to get your club stuck, just like that. But when you go this way, you're going to be prepared that sometimes you're going to hit a shot and it may come out higher and you may feel like it's like bad but actually it's a good shot but it's just the grass that's grabbing your club so you have to be aware of on Bermuda the dark strip into you is you into the grain the light strip where your ball is with the grain so anticipate five more yards or so down the grain and an easier shot into the grain anticipate a pop-up shot and potentially a loss of distance but Always be conscious of your lie. Your lie determines the entire gameplay from then on. Beauty, baby. Okay, 230. We're going to do a little seven wood. I'm going to just do a seven wood. It'll be interesting. Get another ball. Yep, good shot. So even a side one like that is going to put you in a decent position in the fairway. So. Then he hits the perfect. Oh, it's not sitting. Dude, that's 